Hi, Lloyd Reaper here, and the purpose of this video is to give you an orientation to a special activity called a Q-sort. Q-sorts are normally done on paper, and I'll start with a quick demonstration of what that looks like. I will then show a digital version of a Q-sort that is meant to be done in the exact same way. Let's begin. You can think of a Q-sort as a unique type of survey. Q-sorts are all about helping individuals and groups understand what their beliefs or opinions are. In other words, Q-sorts are all about understanding people's subjectivity. Q-sorts can be done on any topic that a group or organization feels is important. Topics can be very serious, such as what you think is the proper role of government in our lives or what you think are the greatest challenges facing America's schools today. But they can also be on fun topics, such as your favorite foods or music. Let's take a look at what a typical paper-based Q-sort looks like using the topic of grocery shopping preferences. You're given a stack of cards that contains the full range of ways of thinking about the topic. Your task is to sort the cards in some way, such as by agreement or preference. You sort the cards in a very special grid that has as many slots as there are statements. As you can see, there are lots of slots toward the middle, but few at each end. Sorting the cards can be challenging. The choices you make will help reveal what you really think about the topic. It can be hard sorting the cards into the grid right away, so it is strongly recommended that you first do a pre-sort into three main groups. Those you generally agree with, those you don't, and finally those you're, you just aren't sure about. You should do this pre-sort quickly. Just look at each card and make a quick decision as to which of the three piles it belongs. When done with this pre-sort, focus on the cards in the agree group and sort those into the grid. Then sort the cards you agree with less. Finally, sort the remaining cards. For serious topics, it can be a difficult task, but also an interesting and challenging one. Toward the end, you'll probably find yourself swapping positions of statements uh, on the grid, and this is very normal. When done, you write the number of the card on a scoring sheet that you then give to your instructor. That's it. That's what a typical Q-sort looks like. Now, let's take a look at the digital version of this exact same Q-sort. You start by entering the activity's special code that your instructor will give you. You then enter your full name, which will only be shared with the instructor. Then you enter an alias, which can be anything you want. This alias will be made public. The Q-sort then appears. Just like in the paper Q-sort, it's highly recommended that you first do a pre-sort of each of the statements into one of three groups. And this is done by using the sandbox area at the top of the screen. So you would again just very quickly take a look at each of the different statements and put them into one of three groups, high, neutral, or low. Also notice that you can place the statements in the sandbox in a line going from left to right that can represent your relative um, priority or preference of those particular statements. As soon as all of the statements are in the sandbox area, you'll see three arrows appear on the right hand side. If you click on any of those arrows, you'll see that the statements in that particular row come down to the main area and in the order in which they were selected. I recommend, just like in the paper version, you start with the statements in the high group first and then move on to the low group next and then finally all of the other statements um, to bring them into the sorting grid just like you did with the paper, the paper version. And just like the paper version, you can then change your mind. You can bring statements back out and uh, resort them. Also notice there's a magnifying tool and an option to change the text size of the statements, which can be very handy when you have longer statements or sentences that you're being asked to sort. When all of the statements are in the grid, the submit button lights up for you to submit your choices. You'll be asked, are you sure? And if you are, your responses will then be uploaded to the database. Your instructor can then analyze all of the QSort responses to find out if there are different perspectives held by the group on this topic. For more information about QSorts and Lloyd's QSort tool, go to noaroad.com slash QSort.